The US is missing out. Wagons are some of the coolest cars ever. To prove my point, take a look at these ones. The BMW M3 Touring, gorgeous. The Audi RS4 Avant, an engineering masterpiece. Or even the VW Golf R Wagon. However, here in the States, we never got any of those. And if you're a big car enthusiast like me, you've probably always wondered why. Turns out there are four reasons why we keep getting denied the coolest wagons. And the last one will probably surprise you. To understand this, we need to take a second to understand a brief history of wagons. Now, wagons have been around for quite some time, and the first one ever made looks more like an SUV and was actually built on top of a Ford Model T chassis in 1910, right here in the United States. Which annoys me even more, like we invented them, why can't we get the cool ones? At first, people saw these wagons as commercial vehicles, not something for normal people to drive around. But as everyone wanted more cargo and passenger space, they became more popular. And the wagons, they kept getting larger and larger, experiencing their peak from the 50s to the 70s due to a huge baby boom. Now, enter the minivan. America's driving needs have changed. We could use a whole new way to get around. A magic wagon that carries two passengers and a big load. I hate them, and I'm sure you hate them too. Just look at this thing. It was created by Chrysler, and it bolsters my point that Chrysler has never done anything cool ever. Now, instead of crushing their new car, they decided to actually put it into production. And once Americans got their grubby little hands on them, it sent the trusty wagon to its grave. Now, if you're a car company at the time, what would you do? Build the car everyone wants and get filthy rich in the process, or build the out of fashion wagon that might not sell? Yeah, it's pretty obvious what they did, and I can't really blame them on that one. While Chrysler ramped up their production, Ford jumped in and started building the Aerostar, then Chevy with the Lumina. Soon, everyone was building minivans inside and outside the US, all to satiate the Americans' appetite for the product. And before long, there weren't many wagons left being produced. Now you might wonder why the rest of the world wasn't buying as many minivans as the US. I mean, wagons are still very popular in Europe and other parts of the world. So did the minivan bug just never reach them? Well, this leads us to reason number two. Take a look at this photo of Dallas, Texas. See the streets? Even in a city, it's pretty wide and easy to navigate. This, on the other hand, is Istanbul, Turkey. The city has been there for thousands of years. It's ancient. It's literally a medieval city. And back in the old days, people weren't thinking about if some idiot could drive their minivan on the roads. But in the US, we were considering that because roads here are pretty new. Even highways are larger due to the sheer size of the country. That means that our roads here tend to favor larger cars. Why why wouldn't you have something like a Ram TRX? It's a huge 700 horsepower super truck and it's awesome. But try to take that same truck to a European city and you're gonna struggle. So to many American consumers, there's no reason to buy a wagon when you could just have a larger vehicle that can store more things and people. For a while, that was the minivan, but today it's the SUV. Nearly every company's best-selling car currently is their SUV variant. Let's take Porsche, for example. They make pretty much all their money off the Cayenne and the Macan. Lamborghini now makes loads of money from the Urus, which helps fund other projects. And even Ferrari, who said they'd never build one, made the Pura Songwe. And there's already a two year waiting list on that thing. So most Americans will just buy the bigger vehicle because in American culture, bigger somehow equals better, but not to all of us. Now, of course, us car enthusiasts would probably rather own an Aventador than a Urus or a GT3 over a Macan. And due to this love for cars, we have begged car companies to bring wagons stateside. Most of the time, it doesn't work, but we did recently get the Audi RS6 Avant. So car companies clearly take notice of the begging, but that can backfire. Let's take Volvo as an example. They heard us begging and they came to the rescue with a gorgeous, powerful, and luxurious V90 wagon. And instead of thanking them by purchasing the car, we decided, nah, actually, never mind Volvo. You. This resulted in Volvo only selling 1,500 in a three-year period. And after that, they canceled the US version. They did leave us the cross-country variant, but it's not selling well. So do you think Volvo is gonna come back and try giving us new cool wagons? No, definitely not. We've shown them what happens when they do. And to be honest, it's not all the enthusiasts' fault. There's only so many of us, and as we've seen, most normal consumers won't buy a wagon. But a lot of the blame kind of falls on the car companies. Here's the wagon we got, the Jaguar XF. It's actually really cool. You know what we don't have anymore? The Jaguar XF. 
Isn't that fun? <laughs> now, you could go back to reason number three and rightfully assume that they stopped making them because no one bought them. And that's partially true, but Jaguar screwed us over. Let me explain. The cost of a Jaguar XF in 2020 was about $66,000. And that's before you add any extra bits to it. Now, you could have bought that, or you could have spent $20,000 less and bought the Jaguar F-Pace. It's pretty much just as fast, has more space and more features. What do you think everyone chose? No person in their right mind, even one who loves cars, would spend an additional $20,000 just to get the wagon version. That's like five Miatas. Just doesn't make sense. A similar thing happened with the golf wagon, which we also no longer get because the Tiguan was priced better. And since it's more car for the money, it won. So car companies just increase the problem even more. It's like they don't even want us to have them. At the end of the day, it's unlikely we'll get more wagons. With current trends going the way they are, we're likely to just see an increase in crossovers and SUVs. Now that's not to say they'll completely disappear. Audi will probably continue selling the RS6 Avant and Mercedes will definitely continue selling the E63 AMG. But for us car enthusiasts who can't spend over $100,000 on a car, there aren't gonna be many options. And it's possible the US wagon is dead. We had some great ones like the Cadillac CTSV or even the Dodge Magnum SRT8. But the days of American wagons is over. And it doesn't seem like other countries will be sharing theirs anytime soon. It's now 2023 and we have a goal for this channel. 1 million subscribers before the end of the year. And if we hit it, we'll take a Prius to the Arctic Circle. Not even kidding about that, I wish I was. So if you wanna see that or more car videos like this one, make sure you subscribe to the channel.